right, let's break this down together. We're working with an equilateral triangle. That means all three sides are equal. And in this case, each one is six units long. Now, inside this triangle, there's a semicircle tucked right along the base. The base of the triangle is acting as the diameter of the semicircle. And what we're looking for is the area of that red shaded semicircle. Now remember, the formula for the area of a semicircle is pi times r squared, all divided by two. So what's our first step? Well, we've got to find the radius. That's the key. Once we've got that, it's just a matter of plugging it into the formula and solving from there. All right, quick check-in. Since it's an equilateral triangle, that tells us a couple of really helpful things right away. All the sides are six units, and all the angles are 60 degrees. Beautiful symmetry, right? That kind of balance is exactly why these problems are possible. Everything lines up so nicely. But here's the big question we still need to answer. How do we find the radius of that semicircle just from this? Here's the plan, and this is a go-to move in triangle problems like this. Let's find the height of the triangle first. Why? Because the height shows up in a bunch of places, especially when we start working with smaller right triangles that are hiding inside. So if we get the height now, it'll make the rest of the steps much easier. To find that height, here's what we'll do. We'll drop an altitude from the top vertex straight down to the base. Think of it like slicing the triangle in half right down the middle. Now look what we've made two right triangles. And one of them, we know the hypotenuse is six. That's the side of the equilateral triangle. The base is three because the altitude split the base in half and the height is what we're solving for. Let's call it H. That's a perfect setup to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, let's bring in our old friend, the Pythagorean theorem. Here's what it tells us. The square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Written out, it looks like this. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. Now, let's apply it to our triangle. The hypotenuse is six, one leg is three, and the other leg, the one we're solving for, is the height, which we'll call H. So we write six squared is equal to three squared plus H squared. That becomes 36 is equal to nine plus h squared. Now let's isolate h squared by subtracting nine from both sides. h squared is equal to 27. To find h, we take the square root of 27, which is approximately 5.2. So there we have it. The height of our equilateral triangle is about 5.2 units. All right, now that we've got the height, we're even closer to the finish line. But remember, our real goal is to find the radius of that semicircle. So the next question is, where does the radius show up in this triangle? Here's the clever insight that unlocks everything. The sides of the triangle are tangent to the semicircle. That means they touch the semicircle at exactly one point, no more, no less. And here's a powerful geometry fact. A radius drawn to a point of tangency is always perpendicular to the side it touches. So what does that give us? It creates a right angle. And with that, we now have a new right triangle. In this new right triangle, the radius R is one of the sides. And that's the clue we need to figure out its exact value. Let's zoom in on one of those new right triangles we just talked about the one that's helping us get closer to the radius. So what do we have in this triangle? We've got the height of the equilateral triangle. That's about 5.2 units, remember? We've got the radius, which we'll call R. And we're also working with some angle geometry coming from the top angle of the triangle, which is 60 degrees. Now, here's the good news. This is the perfect time to bring in a little bit of trigonometry. Let's go back and remind ourselves about the angles in this triangle. The top angle of the equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. When we dropped the altitude straight down the middle earlier, we split that angle in half. So now in each of our smaller right triangles, we have one angle that is 30 degrees, one that is 60 degrees, 
and, of course, the right angle we created by dropping the height or drawing the radius. This is exactly the setup where Soka Toa becomes our best friend. We've got the sides, we've got the angles, and now we can use trigonometry to connect everything and solve for the radius. All right, before we go further, let's pause for a quick refresher. Whenever we're working with right triangles, we can use Soka Toa, a set of tools from trigonometry that help us relate sides and angles. Let's spell them out. S-O-H means sine is opposite over hypotenuse. C-A-H means cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. T-O-A means tangent is opposite over adjacent. These only work when we're working with right triangles, which is perfect because that's exactly the kind of triangle we've built here. Now let's think about which one of these ratios actually helps us. We already know the height of the triangle. It's about 5.2 units, remember? We want to find the radius, which we're calling R. In the triangle we're focusing on, the radius R is the adjacent side to the 60 degree angle. The height is the hypotenuse. So which trig ratio connects adjacent and hypotenuse? That's ka, cosine. Let's look closely at this triangle again. We're using the 60 degree angle. In that setup, the adjacent side is the radius r. The hypotenuse is the height, which is about 5.2 units. That gives us this equation. Cosine of 60 degrees is equal to r divided by 5.2. And just to speak it out loud, we could have also chosen the 30 degree angle instead. In that case, the radius r would have been the opposite side, and we could use sine. Since the sine of 30 degrees is also one half, we'd get the exact same result, either way. But for now, let's stick with cosine. It lines up naturally with the triangle we've been building. Continuing the math. So let's write it out. The cosine of 60 degrees is equal to one half. Now plug that into our equation. One half is equal to r divided by 5.2. Now solve for r by multiplying both sides by 5.2 r is equal to 5.2 divided by 2, r is equal to 2.6 units. And there it is, that's our radius. Now the fun part, let's use what we found. We're trying to find the area of the shaded semicircle inside the triangle. The formula for the area of a semicircle is one half times pi times radius squared. Let's plug in our radius, which we just found to be 2.6. Area is equal to 1 half times pi times 2.6 squared. That's about 10.6 square units. And that's the shaded area we were looking for, sitting neatly inside our equilateral triangle. So, what did we do here? Let's quickly walk it back. We started by using the symmetry of the equilateral triangle. Then we dropped an altitude and used the Pythagorean theorem to find the height. We brought in a geometry fact about tangents and radii to figure out where the radius r fits in. Then we turned to trigonometry using cosine and giving a respectful nod to sine to actually calculate the value of r. And finally, we used that radius in the semicircle formula to find the area of the shaded region. Along the way, we used geometry right triangles, Pythagoras, trig ratios, and even circle properties. All these different ideas working together to solve one neat problem.